All right, people, welcome back to what the heck am I doing? I don't know. Uh, slick 2D programming, game programming. There you go. Okay, so we're back. Uh, what we have right now, if you follow the tutorials all along, is you uh, if you run your code right now, you have some fancy little shapes. All right, good for you. Okay, here we go. So uh, today we're going to talk about the screen coordinate system and colors. All right, so uh, first screen coordinate system. And that is, where or how do I put these shapes exactly where I want them? And in order to understand that, I need to understand the screen coordinate system. It's very important. Okay, So let's take a look at the screen coordinate system. Imagine this black box right here is your screen. Okay, This is your game window. Um, so when we're talking about it right now, we're opening it up at 800, 600. Okay? And let me go to code real quick and show you. In this line of code right here, we are opening, um, we're setting the display mode to 800, 600, false. Okay, what we're doing is opening a game window that's 800 pixels by 600 pixels and false for if it's full screen or not. So when I run this piece of code here, this window here is 800 by 600 and it is not full screen. That's what we're saying here. 800, 600, not full screen. We're playing in a window. All right. Let's go back to my fancy animation here. So this is our game window. When we're saying 800 by 600, what we mean is we got 800 pixels across and we have 600 pixels down. Now, if you don't know what a pixel is, a pixel is the smallest point of light a monitor can display. All right, so we don't measure things in inches or centimeters or anything like that when we're doing programming. We're worried about the pixels. Okay, so we got 800 pixels across, 600 pixels down. So this point right here, this little red point that just came up, that is point zero zero on the screen, which I know some people are like, what? Zero, zero? Yes, that's zero, zero. Zero, zero is not in the middle of the screen like you may have assumed, like your math class teaches you. Your math class is wrong. Really, it's not just for this. So zero, zero up in that top left point. All right, now. As we go across the in in the right direction, we that's the positive x direction, just like it is in math. You go to the right, you get higher x values. But the y direction is reversed, and that means when you go down the screen, you're going in the positive y direction, not the negative. That's very important to remember. All right. So unlike your uh, regular math classes, it's going negative is going up the screen, not down the screen. All right, and the reason they do that is so that all points on the graphics, um, all points for the graphics on the game window, they're all positive. We don't get any negative values for any positions for any graphics ever. If it's negative, it's off the screen. So let's take a look at a couple points here. So this top right point is all the way across in the x direction, and that would be 800 pixels across, zero pixels down. If we come down to the bottom left point here, that would be zero pixels across, but 600 pixels down. That's all the way to the bottom. The bottom right point would be 800 pixels across, 600 pixels down. That's where that would be. That makes your midpoint about 400, 300. All right. Um, now, let's take a look at this point right here. What do you suppose this point is? If we had to guesstimate, right? This is a complete estimation since we can no way know what exactly this point is but I'm gonna guess it's somewhere around 100 100 about a hundred pixels across and about a hundred pixels down that's that point on the screen this point over here again we're gonna estimate it's about 500 pixels across and about 300 pixels down and finally let's take a look at this point right here that's about 250 pixels across and about 500 pixels down. So there are some points and some examples you need to be comfortable with this point system because we need to be able to place the images, the graphics exactly where we want them on the screen. All right, and this is going to help you. So come back and and look at this. All right. So let's go test it out real quick. All right. See if we can do it. So if I look to my render right here, I have all my renders. I'm going to I'm going to restart this. I'm just going to erase everything there and I'm gonna do a new one let's say I'm gonna draw um, a filled no sorry fill rect 
and I'm going to put it at 0, 0, and I'm going to put it in white. And we're going to talk about colors in a second here, and you'll understand exactly why this is the white color. Um, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. Fill rect is x, y, followed by the width and the height. Okay, so I'm going to go, let's go 400, 200 for width and height. Now, where do we expect this to go? Well, since this is my x, y, I expect my rectangle to be filled in at 0, 0 on the screen. 400 pixels across, 200 pixels down. So if I run this, I got a rectangle in the top left corner. Okay. If I move this around, let's move it exactly in the middle. Exactly in the middle should be 400 for the x, 300 for the y. I'm going to do the same width and height right here. Run that. And there's my rectangle exactly in the middle. Now, you might have to be asking yourself, it's not in the middle, but it is in the middle. Okay. Whenever you draw a graphic, whether it's an oval, a rectangle, a string, or a complex graphic, it always places the top left corner of that graphic at the x, y that you have indicated. All right. So if I come here for my example, if you look at my example here, this is your screen, this is your graphic that you want to place. You're not placing the graphic, you're placing that top left corner of the graphic. So if I place that graphic at 0, 0, I get the graphic in the top left corner. If I place this graphic at 400, 300, I get the top left corner at 400, 300. All right, so you're only placing that top left corner of the graphic. So if I place this graphic at 800, 0, I place the top left corner at 800, 0, and it'll look just like that, and you probably won't see it because you just placed it off the screen because that top left corner is the only thing that matters. So um, you'd have to do something less to get it in this top right corner. All right. So that's how the screen coordinate system works. Now, let's move on. Let's change some colors. All right. How does the color system work? Well, color systems in uh, Slick2D and in most displays, they use what we call an R, G, wait for it, B. They use an RGB system. All right, and they're color coded right there because what that means is red, green, and blue. All right, and the only thing we could control for our colors is how much red, how much green, and how much blue to add in order to make a new color. All right, so for all of these red, green, and blue values, we get to choose a number between 0 and 255 for each one. So I can say, give me 0 red, give me 200 green, give me 100 blue, and you will have a new color. I have no idea what that color is, but what these represent then, these values right here, is we call those the intensity values of red, green, and blue. All right, it's very important to remember, they're, they're always in that order, R, G, B, red, green, blue. Now, with this system, being able to choose uh, 0 to 255 different amounts of red and between 0 and 255 different amounts of green and between 0 and 255 different amount of blue. When you combine all those together, what you get is over 16.7 million different colors. All right, It's a lot. It's enough. You're not going to need any more colors ever in your 2D programming days. All right, so we do uh, we mix these three colors. How? So let's take a look at some common colors here. For example, white. Now keep in mind we're dealing with light here, not paint. So a lot of people think white would be like zero red, zero green, zero blue. You couldn't be more wrong. It's exactly the opposite. For white, the value of red would be 255, green would be 255, blue would be 255. The highest values you can get. You know, when you look at a rainbow, what's a rainbow doing? It's splitting white light up into its separate pieces, and you get all the colors of the rainbow. So when it comes to light, white is all colors combined. So we have want as much red, as much green, as much blue as we can to get our white color. Now, let's take a look at black. That What would black be then? Well, I hope you guessed zero red, zero green, zero blue. Black is the absence of light for the monitor. Okay, So we don't want any amount of light to go into that. And here are some really easy ones. Red, what do you think pure red is? Well, pure red is all red, highest value you can get, 255, no green, no blue. How about green? Zero red, 255 green, zero blue. 
blue, zero red, zero green, 255 blue. And here's a couple other ones. Let's go yellow. Yellow is 255 red, 255 green, zero blue. And I guess we'll call this like a teal or cyan. It's zero, 255, 255. So there are some common colors for you. Now there's 16.7 million of them. So there's no way you can like memorize them. All right, unless you're some kind of genius. All right, so if you want to choose a color, typically what I do, I go to Google and I go to a website called, I think it's called colorpicker.com. Here's colorpicker.com. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, so here's colorpicker.com. What you do is you choose the color you want. All right, you're, you're trying to get this color right here. So let's say I want an orangish, like a brown. Let's get a brown. So I want this color brown. Well, what is that? You got to look right here at the red, green, and blue values. That is red, 181, green, 136, blue, 53. Okay. So let's take, I don't know, let's take a green. Let's take a light green, this green. This light green is red, 110, green, 250, blue, 143. I'm going to use this green right now in my program to show you that we can change colors now. All right. So I'm going to switch back to Eclipse. And right here, I'm filling my rectangle. Let's go ahead and change that color. How do I change the color? I say G, that's my graphics pathway. And I set the color to a new color. Now, anytime you set the color to a new color, you need to pass three values in. What three values? Well, if I want this color, I need to pass 110, 250, 143. So let's go 110, 250, and what was it? 143. Okay. So I've made that color. Now I do have an error. So what I have to do is hover over it and import color for, from uh, org.newdon. Sorry. Import color from org.newdon.slick. It's really tough to say. All right. So um, you don't, you do not want to import color from java.awt. That's the wrong color. All right, that'll mess everything up. So make sure you import color from org.newdon.slick. Choose that option. Your error goes away. All right. If you accidentally import the wrong one, you just have to come up here. You can click on this plus symbol right here to see all your imports. And uh, you should see this import, org.newdon.slick.color. If you don't see that, for example, let me take it out. And instead, I import awt. Oh, see, I have more errors. I get it, it messes everything up. So what I would need to do is come up top, take this Java AWT color out, go back down here, and import the correct org.newdon.slick color, and then I'm good to go. Now if I run this, I get my nice green color for my rectangle. That's too big. I'm going to go 200 by 200 for width and height. So you got a nice square in that color. And any color I choose on color picker on colorpicker.com, I can just modify it over there. So let's say I want uh, let's get like a really light sky blue. Like right there. That's 123, 152, 232. 123, 152. Sorry, switch them back really quick. Back and forth to make sure I get this right. So 123, 152, 232, okay, those are all those right there. I should get this exact blue color because that's exactly how all colors work, even on the internet. Even if you're making a web page, you got to know those RGB values, okay, in order to get uh, the color you want on a web page. So I can see that color. So now um, I can draw all my rectangles, ovals, whatever I want, okay. Um, I understand the coordinate system, so now I know exactly where I'm putting them right um, and I learned that I can change the color and that I have 16.7 million different colors to choose from alright so if I want to do another one in a different color I would have to change the color again because after you write the color or let's say change the color I'm gonna change it to yellow after you change the color here it will be that color from that point forward unless you change it again so I'm gonna change it again to yellow and then I'll uh, draw a string right here. Um, just put hello. And I'll put it in the top left corner, zero, zero. So now I should get 
uh, this color blue, and I fill a rectangle on it. Then I change the just the, the, the blah, blah, blah. I can't talk today. I'm gonna change it to this color yellow, and then uh, put the string hello at zero zero in yellow. And let me run it. And so now you see I get this, and I get this in hello. Now this FPS is not part of my uh, code here, um, and we'll talk about that later. But now I can I know that if I put it at zero zero, it appears in the top left corner. All right. And I know how I can choose colors, and all I got to do is change colors and, and draw what I want to, change the color again and draw what I want to. All right. So you can see that you can create all kinds of different colors, and uh, you know the screen coordinate system. All right. So that's about, uh, I don't know, about 15, 16 minutes. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for the next part. I think we're going to dive right into uh, mm, images and graphics next time. So we'll get away from some of these shapes, but it, it's still important to know. We started with shapes because it's so important to understand this coordinate system. All right. And it's still important to understand this color system. All right. So I hope you're comfortable with that. And uh, next time we'll get into graphics and uh, do a little bit, uh, some more interesting stuff. Okay. So uh, thanks for watching. I'm Mickey Elray. Peace out. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, weekend, month, year, day, whatever the heck it is. All right. See ya.